Hello everyone and welcome back to this day in history. Our nightly look back at a specific day in history where we take a look back at the events of a day, the historic context in which they took place, and the historic ramifications of those events. We also take a look at some people that were born on that day and some people that died on that day. As always, if you have not yet, please hit the like button the subscribe button, and the bell notification icon to be alerted anytime I post new content, and tell a friend. And on this, and without any further ado, this day in history, April the 24th. And on this day, in 1800, the Library of Congress is established. President John Adams signed the Library of Congress into existence. The library began as a humble collection of fewer than a thousand volumes. Despite multiple fires that obliterated most of its holdings, including a donation of 6,487 books from Thomas Jefferson, Congress remained dedicated to the restoration and maintenance of, its, of this national treasure. Thanks to its ample funding and continued support, the library has grown to over 17 million printed volumes as well as millions of multimedia items. Um, and, um, me or you, um, uh, cannot go up to the library and rent or borrow books. Um, we can access the books and look at them on site or online, uh, but we cannot go in and take a book home uh, with us. Uh, that is reserved uh, for members of Congress. Um, and if you're ever in the nation's capital, uh, go to the Capitol Visitor Center, schedule a tour um, after this uh, pandemic and virus is over. Um, and after you're done touring the Capitol, take the underground tunnel system um, over to the Library of Congress. Uh, you will come out in the Jefferson Building, uh, which is a uh, the most beautiful of all the buildings. It's the one with the rotunda. Um, and take a look at the beauty that is the Library of Congress. Um, there's also the Adams Building and the Madison Building. Uh, so check out those uh, three buildings named for the second third, and fourth president. Uh, of course, uh, Adams was the first president to live in Washington, D.C. Jefferson was the first president to be in Washington, D.C. for his entire uh, time in office and um, donated a large collection to the library. And Madison um, was the president of the United States uh, when the British burned uh, the town uh, to the ground. Uh, so uh, very uh, symbolic that those uh, buildings are named after them. Births that occurred on this day. Paul Chelichi was born on this day in 1948 in Hudson, Massachusetts. Mr. Chelichi served as a member of the Commonwealth's legislator legislature. He served in both houses, the House and the Senate, and he was a member of the Republican Party. He served in the legislature uh, from 77 to 1991. In 1991, he was elected lieutenant governor, uh, running on a ticket with William Weld. He served in that position uh, from 1991 until 1999, June of that year, uh, when he became acting governor because Governor Bill Weld resigned to focus full-time on campaigning for his ambassadorship nomination uh, to Mexico. It was being held up uh, by the then chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, a fellow Republican, Jesse Helms, uh, who held up Weld's nomination uh, because Weld was a much more liberal Republican uh, than Jesse Helms was. And there weren't many people more conservative than Jesse Helms. Uh, so, to say you're to the left of Jesse Helms, that was pretty much everyone. It was a feat 
to say you were to the right of Jesse Helms. Uh, he would be elected in his own right in 1998 and would serve as governor from 1999 until 2001. He would be appointed ambassador to Canada by George W. Bush and would be confirmed by the Senate in 2001 and would serve in that position until 2005. Interestingly enough, when he resigned to become ambassador, his lieutenant governor obviously became acting governor um, and would serve out the remainder of his term. That would be Jane Swift, who became the first female to ever carry out the uh, duties of governor of the state of Massachusetts. Um, she would uh, be denied uh, a full term of her own, uh, losing in the Republican. She would uh, attempt to run in the Republican primary, uh, but would uh, bow out uh, to a, uh, a guy by the name of uh, Mitt Romney. During his time as governor, Chelichi um, reduced the state income tax rate in a legislature heavily controlled by Democrats from 5.9% to 5%, and the voters approved it in a statewide referendum. He upheld the high education standards of the Commonwealth over opposition from teachers' unions right before those um, standards fully became implemented. They had been a slow roll uh, to implementation. He signed one of the toughest gun control, law, gun control laws in America, and he was a pro-choice Republican, as was Bill Weld. Um, and just a sidebar, most uh, Massachusetts Republicans are pro-choice. In 2011, he was diagnosed with ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. He died in June of 2013, and um, that is um, a little about him. I found him to be a very um, interesting figure. The next person, deaths that occurred on this day, Eugene Stoner, 1997, in Plant City, Florida, at the age of 74. He was the designer of the AR-15. He also designed many other AR weapons, including the AR-3 through the AR-18, and was a co-designer of the M-16, which was, ba which was the Army's version of the AR-15. Uh, so, um, that was the, uh, Military's answer to the AR-15. They were uh, very impressed with it and just said, we we need something like that. So, um, he helped design that as well. I hope y'all all have a great night, and I'll see you tomorrow.